Nice. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to another live stream today. Today, what are we in? We're December 14th, 2020. And uh, this is a anniversary live stream because three years ago, as of today, we started live streaming on Twitch. So I was reminded that uh, today was our anniversary stream and uh, I ended up uh, sort of setting up this live stream to do especially uh, sort of uh, focus on mathematics since everything's layered on mathematics. So we decided to do a math live stream for our anniversary stream, third year anniversary uh, live streaming on Twitch, which is fantastic. Uh, thank you, Elder God, for reminding us because I wouldn't have remembered, I wouldn't have checked it. Wib no Jehov. Wib no Jehov. Hi, Chicho. Good evening from Holland. Good evening, Holland. How are you doing? Good morning from my part. Kebabs, how are you doing? Happy anniversary, bro. Thank you very much. <laughs> three years wow i looked at the first stream that we did where i actually took it in and edited it and did a little intro at the beginning uh so it was pretty cool actually gravity of the situation how are you doing hope chicho hope you're doing well doing well brother thank you very much um definitely wanted to get a stream in today and i'm glad we are i'm glad we are lonely piggy how are you doing good afternoon to you and chat and congratulations on three years on twitch what a ride what a ride what a ride what a fantastic ride really uh we're up to what are we in with subs right now on twitch we're up to 40 200 uh people that are following us on uh, on twitch which is fantastic we're up to 33,000 on YouTube. Our bit shoot numbers are still pretty low, but uh, th that's okay. That'll slowly pick up and we're going to open up new platforms. We're now sharing stuff on SoundCloud as well. Um, we got Discord going, which is amazing. The, our Discord channel is fantastic. Uh, it's basically reduced a lot of places I was going to to get information and I'm coming to our discord page to get information and share information so that's fantastic we need a we need an only fans maybe maybe I, I want to keep it open right uh, but for sure at some point we'll have to as the numbers increase uh, but right now I think the conversation is really sweet because we have a lot of people that have been here a long time um, discussing things and then we get new people coming in they join the conversation right uh, so i do want to make sure we're open for people to join us because for me it is about sharing as much information as possible right really it really is as a technocrats and the centralized powers and stuff like this um, even universities schools censor information and basically do book burnings we need to open up the platforms and just go crazy with it right uh, so it you know it is what it is and Kev, I was I appreciate the free content <laughs> my pleasure man I I consume free content I share free content right I try not to be a hypocrite on on the deal right so if I'm consuming a lot of work from a lot of different people uh, I will also share as much as I can and I think I've done a pretty good job of it and we've done a pretty good job of it right uh, aside from that gang we're doing a math stream um, I'm gonna do my little intro as always if you want to what this is all about I am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o everything's layered on mathematics I don't put anything behind paywalls share and share alike if you don't want if you want to know what this is about oops, on this side patreon is a great way uh, to do so and if you want to support this work patreon is a great way to support this project and for those of you who've been supporting this project thank you very much for the support gang i appreciate it my man always love when you are on awesome awesome lark bark three years three years woohoo rock and roll it's math time folks it's math time folks we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e if you want to participate in the chat with a little happy face going on there twitch is where you want to be at elder good <laughs> wait a second elder god you changed your name <laughs> god uk elder good i read it as elder good but it's elder god uk nice 
<laughs> Alter Gudak. <laughs> I'm funny. How come the name changed, brother? Uh, had my college math final. Got 91%. Awesome, slick, Mick. That's the way to go. Above 90 means you're rocking it, right? It means you're rocking it. Gang, for those of you who've been here on Twitch, supporting this project on Twitch, subscribing, following uh, bits, chatting it up, uh, showing up on the live stream, sharing information, being on our Discord, thank you very much for the support. I wonder where Elder God UK is from. <laughs> Three year anniversary. Oh, third year anniversary. You change it up. Okay. Celebration, celebration, man. Celebration, celebration. I do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on Parlor, Elo, Minds, VK, Gab, and Twitter. And we do share additional content there. And anytime you want, you can come to our Discord on our Twitch page and type in exclamation mark social in our chat and you'll get all the uh, all the social media links popping up as well as you can see over here where is it before it disappears right there there's our discord page as well where there's a lot of people sharing a lot of information which is fantastic okay so you're welcome to join us on all those platforms i do upload audio where we don't have any visuals onto soundcloud.com forward slash chicho chycho as podcast and they should be available on your favorite podcasting platform and this is mathematics and we're going to upload this both to bitshoot and youtube and if you're on those platforms you can support this work by subscribing turning on notifications guaranteed to go to notifications on bitshoot maybe on youtube some people are saying they're beginning it some people are saying they're not getting it so maybe youtube sends it up sends it out for certain things not other things i don't know what's going on with youtube serious glitches there uh both intentional um unforeseen uh, a lot of censorship going on so i think they're just rolling out algorithms that aren't tried and tested and they're trying to eliminate a lot of discussion on youtube hopefully we're not one of them um, and if we are if we see us disappearing hopefully not uh bit shoot and at the beginning of 2021 we're going to introduce at least a third video sharing platform and once we introduce a third video sharing platform uh, the odds are i'm going to start uploading the previous math content specifically language of mathematics math in real life and a lot of the asmr mathematics we've had previously onto those platforms as well so there's going to be a wave of videos coming on gina how are you doing hope you're doing well and welcome to another live stream felix how's life hope you're good brother hope you're good my new youtube account just got a video removed after two hours dude the elder god i don't think by the time i subscribe to your channel i think you're gonna get knocked out nate how are you doing hello hello sean yo how is life welcome welcome let me take these guys down doing 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 man this is math but it is an anniversary stream and lonely piggy what do i got what do i got you didn't ask apples and peanut butter yum apples and peanut butter you got your carbs with the apples and uh, fiber with the apples. You got protein with the peanut butter. Uh, pretty good. Fantastic snack. Glorious snack. Thanks, Lonely Piggy. Felix um, says, I had an idea for a stream yesterday that I posted during the comic reading. I wasn't there for the whole stream so i don't know if you caught it i don't i don't know if i caught it what was it felix what do you got they didn't like my bank robbing clown <laughs> oh the bank robbers the one you sent me that was from brazil or something with the clowns and they're wrapping it up with the guns in the in the car that was crazy man like they're just having a party going for a bank robbery it's like damn was it in brazil yeah yeah <laughs> they didn't like it i mean there was no violence shown or anything so i don't know why they would take it down they got stuff on there that's crazy youtube legendary rob boss how are we doing and the fat 
with the peanut butter yeah and the fat with the peanut butter and pe peanuts aren't really nuts they're lagoons they're uh, beans right always 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 snacking always sma snacking <laughs> sean yo reading points 100 message johnny johnny x johnny how are you doing hi homie hope you're having a good day love from texas ah lots of love right back johnny thank you very much appreciate it appreciate it west coast of canada sends you all the love felix i was uh, thinking we could run a stream where you play some 10 15 minute online chess games with some of the people in chat i don't know if it's feasible but i thought it was a fun idea that would be a fun idea i've been thinking about doing it for backgammon right set up the thing roll the dice and then we do with backgammon and we haven't done a backgammon stream forever and i want to get back into chess i pulled out my my chess board because my partner after watching queen's gambit i think queen's gambit the tv show and the last episode is not worth it uh but up to the last episode was really good it was well done um, it was a fun show i sort of um added the bling bling to chess not that you really need to add bling bling and cg and stuff like this but it's sort of an introduction sort of a something that to get people hyped up for chess right hopefully people lay, aren't laying down in bed at nighttime trying to get 3d chess happening on their on their ceilings um but i brought up my chessboard to uh teach her how to play uh chess so once i get back into it i might i miss playing chess actually i feel like scram ward and some of the maws were up for it i believe cool cool yeah chess is amazing it was at the time when i was playing i played a lot when i was a kid i started playing chess i think and gang if 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 you have kids if you have cousins if you have nephews and nieces if you know if you have friends that have kids that you're looking to help in their uh in their education and their mental development and their emotional development uh, try to empower them with uh, with the ability for them to be able to do critical thinking and connect the dots and become more intelligent start playing board games with them two of the board games i would say you should start playing with them is one is chess the other one is backgammon okay chess and backgammon those are the two board games you should try to start playing with kids at a really really young age like four years old four years old i was i was probably playing backgammon and chess when i was like five right it's a great time kids can pick it up speed gonzalez style another there are other board games as well right one of the other ones which is brilliant is uh mastermind when you line up the colors and the other person has to guess which colors that one might require for them to be a little bit older but it should work with uh five or six as well okay slick mick i remember watching you play back m with your with your mother with my grandma or grandma it was awesome it was oh brother slick mick i was i was trying to get her over here uh, before this whole pandemic stupid thing hit uh to try to do uh more live streams with her uh it just didn't happen um so we're in different cities right now and as soon as i can get her over here she's getting pretty old man she's getting pretty old but i haven't seen her for a few months now i was going there i was seeing her on a weekly for a long time bi-weekly at least once a month i would go there and play backgammon for the weekend and it's amazing to and by the way playing backgammon in chess is not just for kids right like for me one of the mental uh stimulations that my grandmother was getting because as you get older the body starts giving out right you're like the only absolute in life is change so as people get older one thing you need to do as you become a senior citizen or whatnot you have to keep your mind engaged because if you don't keep your mind engaged uh you can get sick you can get into dementia alzheimer's and i know they're 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 sort of connected and not connected but uh you need to stimulate the mind and that was my way of stimulating my grandmother's mind and she was pretty damn good at it all right 
um so show respect to the elders man educate the kids spend time with your elders really lark bar chess is brilliant would we'll love to get into the habit of it yeah indeed me too we used to play when i was a kid like daily okay emily i've been playing a lot with my dad we're gonna play when he is off work you really should get back into it because it's so fun yeah i know i know and gang free assange free assange free assange right emily board games are so much fun for the brain if you play a strategic game that's fun kids will build strategy skills young yeah 100 emily i'm 100 with emily on this one system veil can you prove that you can't have a set with five or more integers where none of their differences are divisible by four Oof. let me think about it how we go about this let me get caught up with chat Ooh, how's the chat going um, okay I'm gonna keep this in mind system veil let me just try to get caught up with chat I had a friend in H Hong, HS HS who was taught chess uh, I can't be Hong Kong HS who was shot by by his extremely authoritarian father like drill sergeant stuff would get really mad and knock pieces over when I would start to win because I was self-taught and that as far as I'm concerned I don't want to say it's bad parenting but it's it's um, it's bad parenting <laughs> really if, if you're stressing out a kid to a level where they can't handle losing uh, it's you're not teaching them right right loss is part of life learn to deal with it young okay learn from it uh, don't teach teach children not to throw and adults not to throw tamper tantrums oh high school HS is high school okay cool I caught it on the over here Chicho have you ever heard of the 42 laws of uh, Matt Matt similar to uh, command commandments but it uh, comes from Kemat ancient Egypt no and they were our guidelines for religious living no I decide to record myself speaking them as if I live up to them and I'm going to listen first um, thing in the morning okay why not meditation is a great thing Felix you're really lucky to still have your grandma I know brother around Chicho and by one of my uh, all but one of my grandparents died before I was 10 oh no and I was too young to appreciate my time with them like I do with uh, people now yeah I feel you I, I feel about that way about my great-grandmother she passed away when I was like 19 I wish I'd spend more time with her and I did she loved me but uh, you always want to spend more right slick Mick lost my gr uh, granddad just last year to dementia oh no it was sad to see him go but I kind of cope knowing it wasn't really him when he died he fought dementia for three years okay and three years is not that long fighting dementia the, the, uh, people that I've known that their elders get dementia or Alzheimer's or um, or other diseases right they find it a relief when they're gone especially if they've been holding on for a long time so take that uh, you know uh, however way you wish right yes free our hero Sanj and pardon another hero Edward Stone indeed and support another hero Chelsea Manning indeed Felix Chicho could you explain how to use differentiation to find the turning point of a polynomial graph sure we'll do that Felix but I got to read up on the 42 one uh, the fact she's streaming on twitch is absolutely incredible to me it's surreal yeah indeed and the system uh, there's two channels that I automatically host on my channel one of them is action for Assange which is a group of journalists and activists that get that have been getting together supporting Julian Assange sharing information they're working their asses off right we started auto hosting them when they were uh, streaming on Twitch and Chelsea Manning as soon as she hopped on Twitch to start streaming I auto hosted it as soon as I heard about it right because I'm subscribed to her feed like Twitter feed and stuff like this so full support to Chelsea Manning indeed and I'm 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 very happy to see her channel grow like mad it's awesome 
Emily kids kids need to be taught losing isn't bad we all lose sometimes but we should push them to do the best they can indeed Emily Ding Bobber just as an extension if these laws are upheld uh, your heart will become lighter than a feather and you will succeed in in the afterlife <laughs> okay <laughs> Emily I lost my grandparents in the in the same week oh I miss them so much but it's always too late when you want to spend more time with them take time to spend with family while you can indeed indeed greetings blessings so we're going to look at differentiation to find a turning point but this other one let me read this this thing again how is that can you prove that you can't have you can't have a set with five or more integers okay let me write this down five or more integers where none of their differences are divisible by four none of their differences are divisible by four so x y z q and k these are all integers and none of their differences are divisible by four. Oh man that's so hard I, i'm really brutal with these proof system veil uh, i i really don't even know how to approach it but basically the question is saying can you prove that all the different combinations that you can make here subtracting them right which is going to be five choose uh two right basically you want to say this x minus y cannot equal cannot equal divisible by four uh, how would we say that it's not even not equal to four it cannot be divisible by four so do, 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 cannot be divisible by four cannot be divisible by four how do we say that so their their difference oh you would do this you would say you would write it down divided by four right so if that's your function so if this was your function f of x and y then it can't be divisible by four so if you divide this the remainder is not going to be zero uh, so how do you say the remainder is not good it blows me away these proofs are hard for me man no just at least one difference is divisible not all of them N no just at least one difference is divisible not divisible or divisible that none of their differences are divisible by four where none of their differences is divisible by four that's, that's what you wrote down first but you're saying no just at least one difference is is divisible by four or is not divisible by four i wouldn't know how to approach it brother i really don't uh, like I understand what you mean but basically what you would do here is you would say this divided by this then the quotient uh, plus it's gonna have a quotient plus a remainder right so for example you're gonna have this to 27 divided by 2 right then if you divide this thing here you do this 27 goes once two one bring the seven now seven three six subtract you get one right this is the q this is the divide dividend or whatever this is the divisor or the other way around this is the remainder right so the remainder has to be a number where r is going to be anything but zero right i, I wouldn't know how to do this I don't know how to do this i would recommend if you want to know this go to our discord page and uh, post the question there are people there uh, that are doing pretty high level mathematics and they love this proof stuff uh, for me i've never been into the proofs uh, they twist me uh, to a certain degree i love the applications of mathematics uh, i like the algebra i like data sets uh, the abstract stuff throws me off a little bit uh, 
it's just the way it is i didn't go down that branch i decided to change directions when i was doing geophysics when i went to university initially i was at one university where there's a lot of theoretical we started doing proofs and the proofs during the exams it would take like three pages to write down a proof of something and i was like okay i don't want to sit there and do three pages of proofs or and that was first year program so i changed universities and went to applications of geophysics All right apologies about that as for the other question how do we find the turning point for a function using differentiation so we're talking about calculus right so take a look at this this is the way we do this let me sure make sure we're all doing good here yeah we're all doing good here okay felix differentiation to find the curve i believe is just yeah dy over dx and then once you get your answer differentiate that mm -hmm. once you get your answer set it equal to zero that finds a turning point i believe uh watch this here let's assume we have the following function right i'm just gonna make it up let's make a should we make a third let's make a third degree function okay to keep things simple okay and we're gonna go through graph this thing and find all the critical points on it okay so f of x is equal to mm, negative 3x squared plus 4x squared oh sorry cubed plus 4x squared plus 5x uh, plus 6 okay that's our third degree polynomial okay we're going to draw the graph here and slowly start graphing it so it's the second derivative slick mick chicho did you teach any uh, geometry math yeah yeah i do teach geometry um, i've been teaching math for about 20 years high school mainly some university college some elementary so let's see what we have in this right now okay and we don't have the x-intercepts for this you know what i'm going to switch this up i'm just going to make it a okay no hold on a second because we do need to oh we could do synthetic division but i really don't know if well this is going to have x-intercepts but they're not going to be clean right so let me generate uh let me generate i'm just going to go to uh wolf ram alpha wolf ram alpha you could go to um some of the other sites as well but i go to this one this is the one i know i'm just going to generate a quadratic or not a quadratic uh negative three x plus one doink two x minus three wink and let's go x plus one two look let's see what this generates for us and then i'm going to i'm going to switch this up so erase this guy i'm going to give you a new quadratic right i'm going to reverse generate it hopefully it should give us it to me yeah there we go nice this is our quadratic watch this hey i said negative i want it to be negative it is negative how come we made it positive oh because there it is silly little bugger here's the quadratic function we got okay or not the quadratic the cubic function we got it's going to be negative 6x cubed uh, ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba 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 minus x squared da -da 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 -da. plus 19x minus 6 okay so we still ended up getting negative 6 which is perfect that's what we want okay and gang don't forget free assange free assange free assange right uh felix slick mick i'm slightly confused by it but i thought that the second differential was to find whether the turning points were minimums maximums or a point of inflection it, it gives it a point should give you the point of inflection though should it not i'm probably wrong though so i'll uh, let you explain let's go through it okay let's go through it watch this so let's put our first thing that we know here right now okay 
f of 0 is your y-intercept, right? If you set x is equal to 0, because if this is f of x and this is your x, when x is equal to 0, that becomes 0 because 0 cubed. So that should be obvious, I hope, to everyone. Second derivative is useful for finding the inflection points. Yeah, indeed. You use first derivatives to find the min max. Yeah, and that's exactly what we're going to do. And thank you, Flying Kiwi. So this becomes 0, this becomes 0, this becomes 0. So our y-intercept is negative 6. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 0 and negative 6. That's our y-intercept. Hopefully that comes out. Okay. That should be obvious, right? When x is 0, you set x 0, this disappears, you get that. What we're going to do now is we do need the x-intercepts as well right so for the x-intercepts what we're going to do we're going to do synthetic division on this thing right because the x-intercepts is one of the first things you want to find now what i'm going to do before we look for the x-intercepts is i'm going to take the first derivative and the second derivative of this okay so the first derivative of this is going to be and it's a polynomial so you take the three here right and just to just for those of you that don't know how taking the derivative of a, of a polynomial works if you have a polynomial f of x right let's say a x to the power of five or let's make this an n doesn't make a difference n plus whatever comes after it it could be more terms that have x's in it all you do you take this kick it down so the derivative of this would be a times n and this would be n minus one plus whatever and whatever is you do the same thing to any of the terms that have x to a power of integer right or you do the same thing to the rest of the terms right if one of the terms happens to be a number three then this just becomes zero because the derivative of three is just zero of an integer okay I, i'm assuming you guys know this already so what this becomes is the 3 comes down, multiplies the negative 6. This is negative 18. x to the power of 2. So you're basically taking out 1 degree from the polynomial. Minus 2 comes down. That's just a 1 there. So it becomes 2. You kick that down. It becomes 1. This is a 1. Comes down, multiplies 19. It becomes 19. This becomes x to the power of 0 because 1 minus... 1 minus 1 is x to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is just 1. So it's 19 times 1, right? So that, I'm going to erase this as well, is your second derivative, okay? Oh, sorry, your first derivative. Your second derivative is going to be, take the derivative of the first derivative. So this becomes negative 36x. 2 comes down, multiplies 18, minus... 2 and then that's it right 19 just becomes 0 where 6 also became 0 right so what do we need to do we need to find the x-intercepts by setting f of x equal to 0 because when f of x is 0 that means your y is 0 so you're on the x-axis so if you set this is equal to 0 then you can factor this and find all your x-intercepts you're going to do the same thing for the second derivative and the oh, sorry the first derivative and the second derivative why do i keep on calling this the second derivative the second derivative hopefully that shows up better okay so let's do this first find x intercepts you find your x-intercepts by setting f of x is equal to 0 and solving for x, right? So set f of x equal to 0 and solve for x, okay? So let's do this. I'm going to pull up my chair because we're going to have to do synthetic division, right? So what we're going to do is going to say negative 6 x cubed minus x squared plus 19 x minus 6 is equal to 0 right so what we need to do is find the values of x 
that make this equation equal to zero. Now, the only way we can really do this is to factor this. Now, this is a cubic. There's a formula you can use to factor cubic functions. I don't memorize it. I just do synthetic division. For synthetic division, basically, the factors that you can do manually, right? You don't need a computer or some kind of formula and stuff to do this. Or possible factors of this divided by possible factors of this. So natural, or let's call them uh, rational factors, right? So rational factors, rational number factors, are possible factors of negative six, or six, because the negative doesn't matter. It's plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, and plus or minus six divided by possible factors of six, which is the same thing again, right? Plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus six. So there's a whole ton of combinations here again, right? Your possible factors could be one, negative one, two, negative two, three, negative three, six, negative six. They could also be one over two, negative one over two, one over three, negative one over three, one over six, negative one over six. They could also be two, and the one doesn't matter because everything over one is just what I just read to you, right? It could be two over two, which is just one, so that's covered. It could be two over three or negative two over three, three over three, oh, sorry, and then two over six, which is one over three, so that's already covered, and so on and so forth, right? Cruel joke, good afternoon, Chicholics. And welcome to Joe Mania. Good afternoon, cruel joke. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the simple ones. I know that there's an integer factor of this because I set it up. The rest of them are fractions. Because as soon as we find a factor of this, it means we took out an x from this degree. And the next degree is a degree of 2, is a quadratic. And we can just use the quadratic formula right so the way you do this is this you take the coefficients in front of the variables as well as the constant at the back you write them out and this is basically long division right so you're going to go negative 6 negative 1 19 negative 6 and what we're going to do is we're going to try out 1 and then negative 1 and then 2 and then negative 2 and then 3 and then negative 3 now, you don't have to do synthetic division for all of them, right? Starting off for one and negative one. What you can do is use the remainder theorem, right? The remainder theorem says this. For a specific value of x, if you sub it into the original function, if the original function is equal to zero, then you're on the x-axis. Let me explain that to you using the y-intercept. So let's check this out. What was f of 0? f of 0 basically means you're going to set x is equal to 0 and solve for this thing, right? So it's going to be negative 6 times 0 cubed minus 0 squared plus 19 times 0 minus 6. So that's just 0. That's 0. That's 0. So this is equal to negative 6. So f of 0 is equal to negative 6, which is really your y-intercept, right? When x is 0, y is negative 6. Now, this theorem is called the factor theorem or the remainder theorem. This is called the remainder theorem. Remainder theorem is the same thing as the factor theorem. Factor theorem is just a special case of the remainder theorem, right? So this is called the remainder theorem. Re remainder theorem factors theorem says this for a given x value if f of x is equal to zero then that x value is an x intercept because y is equal to zero right this is called the factor theorem theorem which basically says for a given x value, let's call the x value, what are we gonna call it? Mm, we don't wanna call it x, let's call it w. For a given value for x, if you sub in w here, 
then if this is equal to zero, then you're on the x-axis, right? That's what we're trying to find here. Now, the way we can do this is use synthetic division or straight out sub in one, negative one, two, negative two. So let's try to figure out what f of one is, right? f of one, which means x is equal to one, right? Which would make it x minus one as being a factor, right? So all you do, you sub in one for x, negative six times one cubed minus one squared plus 19 times one minus six. This is equal to one cubed is one times negative six is negative six. One squared is one. 19 times one is 19 minus six. So what is this equal to? Negative six and negative six is negative 12. Negative one is negative 13 plus 19 is you're at six. So what you just found was f of one is equal to six. So you just found a point on the graph. When x is one, y is six. Okay, when x is one, y is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You just found a point on the graph. It's not the point we're looking for. So we're not gonna use one, x is equal to one, in the synthetic division because as we know it's not gonna work. Let's try negative one. So let's erase these guys. Let's plug in negative one. Negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. Negative one cubed is negative one. Negative one times negative six is six. Negative one squared is one, so this just becomes minus one. Negative one times 19 is negative 19 minus six. So what do we got? Six and negative six kill each other. Negative one minus 19 is negative 20. So F of negative one is negative 20. So when we go to negative one, we're at negative 20. We're like way down here. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, negative one and 20. Right? So our graph goes from here to here, crossing the Y axis at some point. And we know where it crosses it. It crosses it right there. Now we don't know if this thing's going up, touching this, coming back, going like this or anything yet, right? So we can't just draw a straight line or a curved line. But we know from this that negative one is not a factor of this, right? So this point was negative one and negative 20. This point was, what was it? Uh, one and six. We know that much, right? So whenever you're doing this work, you're not really wasting your time if you haven't found a factor right away. You're just finding points on a graph. Negative one and negative 20. Okay, so that didn't work. Let's use x is equal to two. And this would have been x is equal to negative one, would have been x plus one as a factor, All right? So let's try x is equal to negative two. I'm gonna erase it and rewrite it. x is equal to negative 2 or x is equal to 2 sorry not negative 2 because we do po I, I usually do positive and then negative so bu, 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 what are we doing oh yeah we're up there so negative 6 times 2 cubed minus 2 squared plus 19 times 2 minus 6 we could take this off too we don't need this 2 cubed is 8. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times negative 6 is negative 48. Negative 48. 2 squared is 4, so negative 4. 2 times 19 is 38 plus 38 minus 6. Now, this isn't going to equal 0 because we're looking for 0, right? But let's figure out what it is anyway. So f of 2 is going to be negative 48 minus 4 minus 6 is negative 58 plus 38 is negative 20, right? Wow. 2 is negative 20. We're like over here again. So 1, 2, we're down to negative 20 again. I hope I did that right. 
So 2 and negative 20. What a fluke. So check this out. We know that there is an x-intercept between this and that. And we know there is an x-intercept between here and here. Because it goes up and then it comes down again. Which is pretty cool. Right. So we've got a constraint on the x-intercept. Interesting. Interesting. Now, but it wasn't an x-intercept. So we know x is equal to 2, which means x minus 2 is not a factor of this thing. Let's try x is equal to negative 2. It could be pretty tedious, huh? You do a lot of this. Good mental math. Good exercise. Hopefully I'm not making any mistakes. If I make any mistakes, please let me know. Negative 2 which means x plus 2. We're looking to see if x plus 2 is a possible factor of this. Okay. So this would be negative 6 times negative 2 cubed plus negative 2 squared plus, was it plus? Oh, minus, my bad, minus. That would have been a bad thing. Plus. 19 times negative 2 minus 6. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Starsky, how you doing? Yochi Cho, how's it going? Doing good, doing math. <laughs> negative 2 cubed is negative 8 times negative 6 is 48 now. Right? So 48. Negative 2 squared is 4 minus, so it becomes minus 4. Negative 2 times 19 is negative 38 minus 6. Oh, snap, crackle, pop, right? Negative 4 and negative 6 is negative 10. Minus 38 is negative 48. Plus 48 is 0, snap. So f of negative 2 is equal to 0. That means when x is negative 2, y is 0. We found an x-intercept. Sweet. Negative 2 and 0. That's that point right there. That's what we needed. Because as soon as we find one of the x-intercepts, we can do the synthetic division. It'll kick this down from degree 3 to a degree 2. And then we can use the quadratic formula to find the other two x-intercepts. Okay. So now that we did this, Let's do our synthetic division. The way we do our synthetic division is this. We go, we're checking to see is x is equal to negative 2. Negative 2. Which means we're looking to see if x plus 2 is a factor. Right? And the way we do synthetic division is we bring this guy down. Negative 6. Whatever comes down here multiplies by that and goes up. So multiply negative 6 by negative 2 times negative 2, you get 12. And then you add those guys and you do the same thing. Negative 1 plus 12 is 11. Multiply by negative 2 is negative 22. Add them up. 19 minus 22 is negative 3. Times negative 2 is 6 and you get 0. All right? Now, I'm going to erase this part, gang. Okay? The remainder theorem and the factor theorem. So do you, see, do you see what the difference between the remainder theorem and the factor theorem is? Everything else we did, finding that point, that point, that point, is categorized under the remainder theorem because the remainder was your y when you subbed in a specific x. When you find the y is equal to 0 for a certain x, they say that's a factor theorem. I think that's stupid categorizing them as two different things okay i think what they should do is just eliminate the factor theorem and just call everything the remainder theorem and just put a caveat in there saying if the remainder is zero then you found the factor that's what the factor theorem is okay but they do what they do they compartmentalize education of mathematics which is unfortunate And remember, you don't need to be in a rush to copy all this down. You can just take a screen cap of it, right? But if you want to take notes on the side, for sure, copy it down and take notes on the side. Now, I'm going to erase this part. 
And if I had a gigantic board, we wouldn't erase this, right? By the way, gang, thank you for the follows. Thank you for the subs. Thank you for paying attention. Uh, I hope you, you're liking this, okay? And you're finding it useful. So, we just found an x-intercept. Well, what are, what are these numbers? These guys, check this out. What are these guys? These guys are the coefficients and the constant for when we divide this by x plus 2. So these guys actually are negative 6x squared plus 11x minus 3. It's what's left over when you take negative 6x cubed minus x squared plus 19x minus 6 and divide it by x plus 2. This is what you get. Writing it down as a division statement, you simply have to appreciate whiteboards. You simply have to appreciate whiteboards, right? So what this means is this. Check this out. This, I'm going to write it as a division statement, right? Negative, and then I'm going to erase it because we need the space down here. Negative 6x cubed minus x squared plus 19x minus 6. If you divide this by x plus 2, you get negative 6 x squared plus 11 x minus 3 that's what it means on the same note if you cross multiply this guy up what we've done is this so far negative 6 x cubed minus x squared plus 19 x minus 6 is equal to x plus 2 times negative 6x squared plus 11x minus 3. That's what we've done so far, right? We broke this down into two things multiplied together. Now, this is a quadratic. It's made up of two other, uh, I want to say polynomials, I guess polynomials of degree 1 multiplied together. So we need to factor this guy. How are we going to factor this guy? We can factor that guy using the four-step method I've shown you guys, right? And the four-step method is this. Should we do it here? I'm going to erase this. I'm going to erase this whole thing. And we're going to do the four-step method and rewrite this thing. Okay? Watch this. So we want to factor this guy. We'll use a quadratic formula. X is equal to negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A, right? But before we use a quadratic formula, I like to see if we could factor this manually, right? And we're looking for the x-intercepts because this is a new function. You can consider it to be a new function, right? Because this is really f of x times x plus 2 which is one function right you could call this g of x you could say let g of x equal x plus 2 and let k of x equal negative 6x squared plus 11x minus 3 so f of x is really g of x times l of x let me write this down properly. Oh, k of x, not l of x. k of x times k of x, where g of x was x plus 2, and k of x is this guy, right? So we can say this is k of x. So we want to find out when this is equal to 0, which means when it crosses the x-axis, right? Hey, Chicho, happy anniversary. Thank you, Eduardo. Right. Now... Let's use that four-step method that I've shown you guys how to factor. Uh, in my part of the world, they teach people decomposition. Decomposition sucks. I use the four-step method. And I, I wrote it down as four-step method. And this is factoring complex trinomials. Factoring complex trinomials trinomials okay if you look for 
factor in complex trinomials online and put a chicho in the search there's going to be a bunch of videos that pop up okay so this is the way you factor complex trinomials negative 6x squared plus 11x minus 3 is equal to 0 take this negative 6 multiply by this you get x squared plus 11x negative 6 times negative 3 is 18 oh no no hold on before we do this we've got to factor out a negative 1 my apologies factor out a negative 1 we don't want the first term to be negative when we're doing this right so factor out a negative 1 right jump in the gun then we're going to get 6x squared minus 11x plus 3 is equal to 0 now don't divide the negative 1 out you need the negative 1 then you take the 6 and multiply by this so you got negative 1 and you're going to get x squared minus 11x 6 times 3 is 18 is equal to 0 now you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you 18 add to give you negative 11. do you know what they are because they do exist x x two numbers that multiply to give you positive 18 and add to give you negative 11. just straight up multiplication this is what i see when i tell people it's really ridiculously important to um to make sure you know your multiplication table Doop. i'm turning slow mode off chicho disables slow mode for this room yeah no slow mode right i'm going to give you the answer i'm going to give you the answer i'm going to give you the answer negative two and negative nine right minus two minus nine negative two times negative nine is 18 negative two plus negative nine is negative 11. cool so we did that but this is a factor of this it's not a factor of that guy the way you use this method is you take the six drop it in the front of this x's and then you take out the gcf and dump so you do g c f and dump so you got negative one what's the gcf from 6x minus 2 well 2 you can take a 2 out from 6 and a 2 out from 2 so you take the 2 out and dump it so now you got 3x minus 1 what's the gcf out of 6 and negative 9 or 6 and 9 is 3 take the 3 and dump it now you got 2x minus 3 is equal to 0 what does that say now before we finish this we're going to multiply the negative 1 either into this guy or into that guy it doesn't make a difference okay shouldn't make a difference right. because that way we get the real factor of it i'm going to multiply this into here so the factors of this are negative 3x plus 1 and 2x minus 3 okay now remember you only have one negative one here so you can only multiply the negative one into one of these do not multiply them into both so whenever you have a negative quadratic leading coefficient factor out a negative one and then use this method and then multiply the negative one back in okay what this tells us is the other two x-intercepts are we've talked about this you can set each one of these equal to zero so you can go negative 3x plus 1 is equal to 0 which means 3x is equal to or negative 3x is equal to negative 1 so x is equal to 1 over 3 that's the other x-intercept and that basically means this guy crosses the y-axis here and goes through a third and then goes up to here and the other x-intercept is 2x minus 3 2x minus 3 is equal to 0 so x is equal to 3 over 2 which is one and a half which is exactly what we got so we knew this guy came up went through here went through that and went through that and we got our two x intercepts right there cool so i'm going to erase all this and i'm going to write this guy in its factored form okay that way we can see exactly where the x intercepts are and what i'm going to do is i'm going to extend this this way so we can zoom in into the location where things are occurring okay so let's take get rid of this 
what do we got? All right, I'm going to write this up here so we don't lose it. Negative 3x plus 1 and 2x minus 3. Now, obviously, when you're doing a work, you would never erase this stuff, right? And we didn't have to use the quadratic formula. Cool. And if we did this, this is what we ended up getting. Negative 3x plus 1 and 2x minus 3. Yeah. Okay. So what we have now, our original function, f of x, right? How many swiggles is that? How many swiggles? It's three. Right, Matt? So what we got is f of x, which is negative 6x cubed minus x squared plus 19x minus 6 can be factored into x plus 2 times negative 3x plus 1 times 2x minus 3 right now because these things are so tight here i'm going to rewrite these things and i'm going to make my x-axis stretch out a little bit so we can zoom in on it right so the the three points we four points we have right now are these negative two and zero which we already know uh negative one and negative 20 one and six and 2 and negative 20. I'm just writing them down here because I'm going to kill them and I'm going to put them back on so we don't forget, right? And there's nothing wrong with adjusting your graph once you figure out what a function looks like, right? Let's erase this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw my line again. And I'm going to make this one and this two and this negative one and this negative two, right? Just stretching it out. These are the points we're going to put on here. Negative two and zero. That was this point right there. That's going to be negative one and negative 20, negative one and negative 20. And then we've got one and six. And then we've got two and negative 20, right? So this point is two and negative 20. This point was negative 1 and negative 20. This point was 1 and 6. And that point is negative 2 and 0. All right. Let's erase these guys. Then we got, so this is uh, negative 2 and 0. So our x-intercepts based on this, because we're going to set this equal to 0, are going to be x is equal to negative 2, which we got x is equal to 1 over 3 and x is equal to 3 over 2 so 1 over 3 is here and 3 over 2 is just 1 and a half which is here right so this is 3 over 2 and 0 this is where we're we going to put this a third and 0 right so right now we know graph does this it's a negative coefficient in front of leading coefficient. So we know it goes like this. This thing is going to come down, go down here somewhere, most likely come up or go down here and then hit it on the way up. And the peak, we don't know where it is, right? Because right now, think about it this way. I'm going to put this, let's do a green red. Let's put it on red. Hopefully the red will show up. Will the red show up or the black contrast? Let's see. Is there a contrast? Not really. Let's see if the red is a contrast. Is that a contrast? <laughs> Not really. Green? Let's see if the green is a contrast. Yeah, the green's a contrast, right? 10x minus 3y equals 18. Da, da, da. Six solving system by elimination. Solve system by elimination. Well, we can do system by elimination after this. Now take a look at this. Uh, let's get rid of this. So the green. So we know the graph goes through this. We know the graph goes through this, but we don't know if it comes down this way or if it goes 
goes down here and then comes back up. And then we don't know how low it goes. We know it goes through this, goes through this, but we don't know if it goes through this and goes peaks up there or peaks up here. So let's assume it can go up there, come down, go through this. So we don't know the feel of it exactly how it looks. So what we need to figure out right now is this point and this point. Okay. Those two points we get from the derivative. Because the derivative is the slope of the graph of the original function. So this is a function that gives you the slope of this function at every point on x, right? So if you want to find out what the slope of the graph is when x is equal to negative 2, you plug in negative 2 here, find it, and the, that's the slope, rise over run. Here, we can do one. Here, let's do it here in green. So let's assume we want to find out what the slope of the function is, um, this original function is, at x is negative 2. So we can do this. Find f of negative 2, which is going to be negative 18 times negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus 19. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 18 is uh, 4 times 20 is uh, 80 less 8. So 72 should be 72. 4 uh, or 72. So negative 72. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 plus 19. So that's going to be 23. What's 72 minus 23? 6, 12, 9, 4. So it's negative 49. What does that mean, negative 49? That's the slope. I already heard that from Mike Oxlock. What's negative 49 mean? That's rise over run slope which is rise over run and it's negative so the slope is going like this really sharp so for every one unit in the x direction you're going down 49 units rise over run that's what the slope is that's what this gives you right so for one unit going this way we've gone on all the way down to 49 negative 49 right so if we plug in uh should it be negative 49 did i do that right four squared one nineteen equals four times 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 it's weird because it should be a negative 20 unless we did something else wrong previously, right? So there's a little bit of discrepancy in what we did here in finding, whoops, where is it? That point. But the function is correct. Is it? Is it? Yes, it is. 3, 18, 2, 2, 2. Yeah, so that's correct. That's what I'm checking right now, okay? Your rise, which is up and down, is y, and your run is x left and right. Indeed, yeah. Rise over run. Yeah, the y is up top. So this is this is the y and this is the x, right? So this means negative 49 over 1. That's how much you're going in the vertical, 1 in the horizontal. Gay bitches for <laughs> I don't know, Matt. <laughs> so check this out. If this graph or if this function this guy here the derivative of this is the slope of our function right then what we have to realize is what you have to avoid that we're doing what you have to realize is at the points of turning whoop whoop right where it turns the slope is zero right I mean, he's showing us right. He explained better than my teacher, Lazaro. So what happens is, check this out. Let's assume we're zooming into here, right? Let's assume the graph is going like this and then turns around and comes down, right? And we're looking for this point, right? 
let's assume this is this this part which is zoomed up here right so if that's the graph then the slope of this function is like this goes up goes up goes up goes up goes up the slope is doing this the slope is doing this the slope is doing this the slope is, but it has to turn around and come down again right because this way is positive 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 at this point the slope of the graph is going to be zero right like literally zero right and then the slope starts coming down again starts going negative so if we set this function which is the derivative of this function giving us the slope of this function if we set this equal to zero solve for x we're finding the x values where this thing turns around we're finding that x value cool and then once we found that x value we can plug it back into original function and find the y associated with it right has to be zero right so let's do what am i going to erase we need space i'm gonna take all of this down and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on. Let me erase this. You can see that you're doing a lot of work, right? I'm going to write the factors of this function up here. That way we have it, right? So this guy is really x plus two, negative three x plus one. 2x minus 3. Okay. That was our purpose. We want to find the uh, x intercepts, right? So I'm going to erase all of this all the way up to here. That way we've got room to play, right? Do we need anything else from here? Nope. Nice. Whew. All that gone. Isn't that nice? Let's build it up again. I hope you're having nice fluids. So take a look at this thing. Should we do this in green? Nah, let's stick with uh, our purple. We'll use the green ellipsoid nose cone, my friend. Ellipsoid nose, nose cone. I don't know what that means, but it sounds cool. Faster than sound. Now watch this. We want to find when f prime of x negative 18 x squared minus 2x plus 19 is equal to 0. We could take this and multiply by this and try to find two numbers that multiply to give you whatever that multiplication is and ask to give you negative 2, but I'm not going to mess around with that. I'm going to use the quadratic formula. It might be ugly. But it's going to give it to us directly, right? So x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, which is going to be. <coughs> and don't forget, gang, free Assange, free Assange, free Assange, right? So our a here, write it like this a is equal to negative 18 b is equal to negative 2 and c is equal to 19. right it's just the coefficients and the constant <coughs> right so let's plug it in x is equal to negative 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 2 is 2 plus or minus square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times a which is negative 18 times c which is 19 all over 2 times negative 18 which is going to be 2 plus or minus square root of 4 negative and a negative is positive now we've got to go 4 times 18 times 19 what is that 4 times 18 times 19 4 
times 18 times 19 1368 1,368 plus 1,368 all over 2 times negative 18 is negative 36. Now, what are the odds of 4 plus that being a perfect square? I doubt it. Plus 4, and then we take the square root. Boink. Well, it's not, obviously. Germans do all this stuff better, and so do mistakes. So do mistakes. <laughs> So, oh, what was that number? We wanted that number. So this was, this ends up being 2 plus or minus square root of 1,372, 1,372 over negative 36, which means this is equal to 2 plus or minus 37. I'm just going to go with the decimal, 37.0405. I'm just rounding, right? Welcome in the stream, Elder says nice. Over negative 36. So x, these two points occur, and x is equal to 2 plus 37.0405 over negative 36, and x is equal to 2 minus 37.0405 over negative 36. Now we have to figure out what this is. So plus 2, plus 2, and then divided by 36. Divided by 36, but negative. So it's going to be negative, negative 1.084, 0845. And this one, I'm going to explain to you what that is. That value right there is this, negative 1.8. 1, 1 so where I drew this is incorrect. This graph actually comes down here. And the point that it turns up again is close to this one, but it's on this side. Okay, it's on this side. So it goes like this and then goes up. Okay. This one is going to be negative it's going to be 2 minus 37.0450 whatever so it's going to be negative 35.0405 divided by 36 which is zero really close 0 0.9 because it's negative over negative is positive 0 0.9733 so where does that occur? That occurs right before the one. So that one we had at the right location. So what we have right now is this. Let me erase these. So you see what we've got. Crazy bro Athens, how are you doing? Hi everyone, hope you're all doing, doing fine. You too, you too. So what we have here is this part was incorrect. Because, where's our green? The x part of this is this. So I'm going to erase this. That was 1, remember, right? So that's 1 and 6. Let me write that down here. This is 1 and 6. This point here is 0 0.9733. And we need to find a y. We need to find y. How are we going to find y? We just plug this into this and we find our y. Cool, right? It's been a while since I caught a live stream. The Curious K. Long time no see Chicho. Keep mathing it up. Keep mathing it up, brother. That's what, what, what the plan is. And then this one is this. Let's bring it down comes here really close and then zooms back up right and this point here is going to be negative one 
negative 1.0 8, 4, 5, and the y. And we need the y for that one too. And the y for that one, again, we plug it into the original x and we find it. So let's do it. Let's see what we got. I'm going to erase all of these right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the x intercepts, or not the x, well, they are the x intercepts really, but negative 1, let's leave us some room negative 1.08 uh, 45 and 0 0.9733 right and we need to find the y associated with this right? so now i'm going to erase all this and give us more space right so let's kill all this and i'm going to erase these guys too we don't need that it just makes it too much I'm gonna kill this right and we're gonna kill this right. oh clean clean sweet all these equations represent are just f uh, figures in this case lines in this case lines thank you for the follows gang by the way okay so now what we need to find it's just not a y it's f of this point and f of this point in the original function so let's do the first one f of negative 1.0845 is equal to now you can plug this in either in the expanded version or the factored version the factored version is easier to plug in i think in my opinion right so you could plug it into this negative 1.0845 plus 2 times 3 negative 3 times negative 1.0845 plus 1 times 2 times negative 1.0845 uh, minus 3 okay. instead of doing cubes and squares and stuff like this right so I need to do that with a calculator but what I'm gonna do with it or if someone wants to do that if you let us know what it is confirm what I'm doing because I'm gonna do it with on a what do you call it uh, on the computer so sometimes I make boo-boos zero eight four five negative plus you 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 need to use a calculator you need to use it i need to use a calculator no chicho <laughs> i know it eh? so this one is because the numbers aren't nice and neat right and that's one thing i do gang when i when i'm working with students i i make the first level of numbers relatively easy to do but then the rest of it is just it is what it is right uh so they're not nice and clean they come out to be real life numbers so this times this is three or times that is going to be positive and then i'm going to add one so it's going to be 4.2535 oops and then it's going to be two times uh, one point zero eight four five oh i forgot the one pooper scooper two times it's shio's birthday today <laughs> one point zero eight four five doink so it's going to be negative and then minus that so it's just going to be plus three it's just going to be five point one six nine but negative right and this one positive positive yeah so for this when it's this we've got one negative so it's a negative times a positive times a positive so we know it's negative i can only do the linear algebra and tell you if a function a figure is a function or of another cool calculators are fine calculators are fine really right 
So now we've got to multiply all these guys together. So what is this guy's equal to? Let me bring it up again. So that's going to be times 4.2535, 4.2535 times 0 0.9155, 0 0.9155, which is 20.1285. So f of negative 1.0845 is that, which is that point right there. So that point right there, where's our green? This point right there is 20 negative. Oh, that should be negative. Negative, because it was a negative. Negative 20.1 285 right so that's our first uh, minimum it's going to be relative minimum right because over here it goes down further so negative 1.0845 and negative 20.1285 that's the bottom relative minimum now we've got to do it for this guy so this guy is negative 20.1285 let's do it for that one f of 0 0.9733 is going to be 0 0.9733 plus 2 negative 3 times 0 0.9733 plus 1 2 times 0 0.9733 minus 3. Let's do it again. This one is easy. This one is 2.9733 times. 3 times that at 1. Did I do it right? Yeah. yeah. So let's see what we got ding 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 0.9733 0 0.9733 nine, seven, three, three, times three boink which is negative so we add one so it's going to be negative two nine one nine nine negative two what point nine one nine nine right and then two times 0.9733 is equal to that make it negative at three point one it's going to be negative so it's going to be negative one point uh, zero five three four and then we're going to multiply all these together right times 2.9199 times 2.92.9733 which is 9.1453 so f of this is equal to that. So the other point is 0 0.9733 and 9.1453. This point becomes, which we had a, a pretty good spot, but it should be further down. If that's 6, 7, 8, 9. So it should be further down here. It goes like this. That point is going to be 9.1453. Cool. And don't forget, gang, free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. What really got my noodle going was learning how old this is, with the ex uh, exception of functions, of course. Yeah. So we found that, that. Now what we need to find is that where this guy is equal to zero, I believe we're going to set it equal to zero, where it changes, right? Am I correct? Should be, right? Because there's inflection points, what happens at a certain point, it goes like this. 
H. We want to find this point. And actually what we do for that is find where it's positive and where it's negative because positive means it's concave up and negative would mean it's concave down. That's what it really gives us, right? But what we need to do is find where it's zero because that's the break point where it goes from positive to negative, okay? So let's do the second derivative. I'm gonna erase all this, by the way, again. Let me put this point up here too. 9.1453. Those are our relative minimum and relative maximums. This and this. This guy is relative max, that point, and min, relative min, which is that point. Okay. Now, let me erase all this. The last thing we need to do is find the inflection points where it's switching up. So all we're going to do is find where it's equal to zero. Right. I believe so anyway. So set, oops, that's not an S, that's an F. Set F double prime of X is equal to zero. So negative 36 X minus two is equal to zero. So negative 36 X is equal to two. Divide by negative 36, so X is equal to negative one over 18. Negative one over 18, so right about here, right? If you break this from, that's negative one, negative one over 18 is like right here, right? Really low. So here is, comes down, goes up. So we can solidify this now because we know what it looks like, right? Comes up. And at a certain point here, it turns around again and goes down. Oops, my graph sucks. At this point, right? This point right there, which is negative one over 18. And we need to find the Y associated with that. So we're gonna plug in negative one over 18 for X and find what the Y is because you're always going back to the original function. Right? This is, by the way, seriously distorted perspective. Okay. My graph sucks. Not to scale. <laughs> okay. So we're going to find f of the original function of negative 1 over 18. How are we going to do that? Let's do it in that as well. So that's going to be negative 1 over 18 plus 2 times negative 3, negative 1 over 18 plus one times two, negative one over 18, oops, minus three, right? I'm just gonna simplify this, just do algebra, reduce it a little bit before we punch it in, right? So common denominator here is 18, that's negative one, that becomes plus 36. Three goes into 18 six times, negative and negative is positive, common denominator six, so that's one plus six. Two goes into 18 nine times. Common denominator is uh, nine. Nine times three is 27. So you got negative, oops, that's a nine. Nine, one minus 27. Right? Destructive graphs can be called graphs can be called original arts in some ways grace rodman's who asked this question who asked this question i forget who it was that asked this question uh felix maybe Fe i think felix asked this question right so we're going to multiply all this crap together wow look at all these numbers 35 uh, i sort of came up with the numbers the numbers are horrendous but they are what they are right i'm not gonna uh sugar or what do you call it uh make it ran if i picked it randomly maybe it would have been easier right uh, or try to thought about the numbers a little bit better so we need to multiply this out 
Man, nothing really simplifies. We've got a two that goes into both of these, but that's about it. Well, two goes into this three times, two goes into that 19 times, negative 19. <laughs> that's it. So we've got to multiply all this out. <laughs> Pooper scooper. I pick crazy numbers. So let's check this out. Let's check this out. Lowest common denominator? Oh, no, we're multiplying. We're not adding. So we don't need the lowest common denominator. Uh, when you're multiplying, you're just reduced before you multiply. And unfortunately, this is all it does. It doesn't reduce anymore. So it's going to be 35, 35 times 7 times 19, which is 4,655. 4,655, and it's negative over 18 times 3 times 9 3 times 9 is 27 so 27 times 18 equals 486 so it's going to be 4655 divided by 486 4655 divided by 486 you get negative 9.5782 that's there which is not bad i mean a graph should be a little bit lower doing this so on this side this is concave up it'd be positive this guy is above zero and on that side it's negative uh, tomorrow i have my final exam for the semester in econ I'm a bit stressed. Oh no, don't get stressed. Right? So this point, this guy is now negative 9.5782. Okay. And we found all the important points of this graph. So we've basically defined this function. We got everything we need for this. Right? We found all the critical numbers. We found this, this, this. We found this and this, and we found that. That's it. I'm glad we didn't do a fourth degree four. <laughs> I hope uh, that was clear enough. That sort of intro, uh, intro to calculus. Best of luck. Best of luck indeed. Fan. Fam, fam, James Bond. Thanks a lot. And don't get stressed. Don't get stressed. Don't get stressed. Lazaro, redeem me 500 points. Ah. <laughs> Fun. I'm glad we've gotten into calculus finally, right? I still haven't created any ASMR like calculus. Uh, lessons straight up like edited video because we're not doing any edited video yet but we will at some point uh, once I get back into making edited videos and stuff definitely ASMR format right definitely ASMR format fun easy peasy I have something that I didn't understand in math can you try to solve it sure let's try it so I came here late later why did you find the point we need to find where the curve switches right we because it's the inflection point so for example a cubic function does this we found this point right the, for this one it was the other way around right so we we're finding this point we're finding this point okay bro oh yeah this one uh solving system by elimination okay got it cool so you have two functions here's two functions so system by elimination and stuff i'm going to erase all this and do you understand what it is you're trying to do if you're solving a system by elimination you're trying to find out where they cross right uh 10x minus 3 is equal to 18 10x minus 3 is equal to 18 and minus 3y I guess minus 3y is equal to 18 
and negative 2x plus 3y is equal to 6. Negative 2x plus 3y. What? Oh, 3y again? Cool. 3y is equal to 6. And you want to solve by elimination? Sure. This is your first equation. This is your second equation. You want to find out where these two functions cross each other. Dan's the plane x, y. Oh, that's all German. Like, said in French, you sent it in French. <laughs> Funny, man. So check this out. Uh, type it in English, I'll do it. This one's Speedy Gonzalez, right? So you're trying to find out when this function crosses this function. You can rewrite both of these equations in terms of y is equal to mx plus b and graph them and see where they cross, if they cross, right? I'm not going to bother doing that because you just want to solve it by elimination. Solving it by elimination means get rid of one of the variables right off the bat. For us, if we just add the two functions, the y's will disappear because that's 3y and that's negative 3y, so they kill each other. We could also multiply the second equation by 5, make this will be negative 10x plus 15y is equal to 30, and then add them up and kill the x's, but I'm not going to do the extra step. I'm going to kill the y's right off the bat. So if we add these two equations, this kills this, this becomes 8x is equal to uh, 24 divided by 8, so x is equal to 3. So we found the x. You can find the y by subbing in the x into this one and this one, I'm solving for y, or you can do elimination again. You can take equation 1 and go, okay, let's keep that 10x minus 3y is equal to 18. For equation 2, multiply it by 5. If you multiply it by 5, you're going to get negative 10x plus 15y is equal to 30. Now add them. If you add them, these guys kill each other. This because becomes 12y is equal to 48 divided by 12. So y is equal to 4. So where they cross is solution is 3 and 4. Okay. In xy plan you have to give the equation line that is passing through this and this so give the equation of a line that passes through that and that but you need a slope as well we don't have a slope what's the slope uh fan i hope that's thank you my pleasure uh lazaro so we have two points. I think, we, if I'm reading this correctly, the point, wait a second. Line that is passing through. In X, Y, plan U. But when you write down, one one two point three is is that an x intercept or y intercept uh or is that a point is or is your point this is that the point where this is your x and that's your y oh sorry two three is that what you got x yeah, that's an equation of a line. 